Aaron P. Rosie Dufford is going to open the exhibition and say a few words. And I'm going to say a few words and explain a little bit about the work. And then we're going to hear from some other people, some of the artists and other people we're connected to. And um, someone from the prison service as well. He's done fantastic work. So over to Rosie. Um, hi everybody. I had no idea this would be so well attended, but actually I should have known because I'm always showing off about how Canterbury and Whitstable is so connected with the fact that we have a lot of refugee interaction and we have some amazing charities like Kent Refugee Help and Cran and all of the people that are really properly caring about our friends and neighbours who come here for asylum and for safety and for some peace in their lives. And we've recently had um, some debates in the House about this kind of thing and obviously the Windrush issue has been fairly horrific for those of us who see that those people their whole lives are being effectively destroyed, wiped out, invalidated by the Conservatives, their records destroyed, and in the same breath as they're talking about those Windrush British citizens, they're also using the term illegal immigrants. So in the debate that we had last week, they, they were talking about Windrush and then illegal immigrants, and that was probably, of all of the things that happened, I think that was such an outrage. So in Hansard, you've now got those, those two things in the same sentence. The Windrush generation, obviously, as we know, are not illegal immigrants. The people, people that seek refuge here and need our help are not illegal immigrants. They're human beings, which is something that we need to officially recognise, and all of you do so much to kind of to say that, to get the message out there. They're human beings who are our friends and our neighbours and our colleagues and our family who we need to welcome here and open our lives to rather than shun away and, and call, you know, other. So I haven't prepared to speak, I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much for coming. I can't wait to see the art. And thank you for all the amazing people that have helped to make this happen. Kate was fantastic and does so much in a very modest way for um, the Kent Law Clinic. She's helped my team with our immigration cases. You know, I couldn't really have done the work without her. Um, Chris is fantastic. I know so many people here that do so much, so thank you very, very much. That's basically it. So I'll hand over to the expert. Okay, so I'll kick off. Um, Thanks, it's, massive. it's such a fantastic turnout. I I'm so happy, I'm so pleased that you've come, you know. Because it's not just like me, it's because I was one of the people that organised it, it's just standing up for foreign national prisoners because they're such a discriminated group and they get such a bad press. And people in prison cannot speak out, you know, they're silenced by that environment. So today, this evening, we are speaking out for them just by our physical presence and being here, and that's wonderful solidarity. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about the artwork and, and kind of what's behind it. And just to say there's a toilet at the back there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Through the door. Um, so for a long time, I really wanted to do something to change the view, the kind of public view of foreign national prisoners. And I felt that the, the routine ways of organising meetings um, and uh, giving people facts and figures really wasn't going to work because they do get such a bad press. But as Rosie's saying, these are these are wonderful human beings. So people. So I came. I came across uh, the idea of organising the art exhibition came to me because art is a way of telling stories and telling about people's lives. Um, bypassing all that stuff and facts and figures um, and um, the artwork actually speaks for itself um, I wanted to just say something about Van Gogh who was a socialist artist and Van Gogh said that his <coughs> art was made to light the windows of the poor and one of the people who's an artist here, Cadour Miliani whose work is over there um, his words are on our fire. He's really a poet as well as an artist, and he said, by telling our hidden stories to our, this exhibition brings light in the darkness to those of us buried in the prison system. It's important for everyone. And I think that really links with Van Gogh. And I hope that by producing art, prisons producing art, 
and knowing that their art was going to communicate to people, that has brought some light in the darkness in the prison cells. Um, just to say a little bit about the arts, um, this art <coughs> over here, all along that wall, comes from Pentonville Prison. Um, and actually it's prints of the work, which was organised by the art teacher, because the prisoners didn't want to give us their original work. And I've been advised that the original work couldn't be sold while someone's in prison, but we can sell these because they're actually prints. So those are going to be sold, if anyone wants to buy them, for £25 each. And all funds will go to the charity. Um, going round the corner, uh, just round there, are paintings by Nazarene Carvas, who's standing here with me. And she's a political exile from Iran. And she was eight years in different jails in Iran, including the, the, including the notorious Iban prison, where um, Nazarene Zaghari Ratcliffe was held. And there's a poem by Nazarene Zaghari Ratcliffe there um, to complement Nazarene's poetry and her painting. And Nazarene has a campaign for women's rights, so she's going to say a little bit anyway about what she does. And she's still doing that, despite everything that's happened to her. So she's an amazing person. She's our guest artist here. I just, it's, it's fantastic that she's contributed in this way. She's also got a lot of coming out about her experiences. And then as you go around the wall, there is this, these pieces of artwork um, are by X prisoners and ex-immigration detainees and this was part of a workshop called The Village and a local poet helped me run this workshop and this was about people thinking about significant landmarks in their lives like their school, um, their mosque, their church, um, their college, swimming pool, things like that and it could either be in contemporary life, or the places they left behind, or imaginary places. And that helped people to look at their whole immigration journey in a kind of a positive way, and maybe think a little bit about it. And it was a complete distraction to the grind of waiting to see what's happening to your case. And you know, this goes on and on for people, and it's so um, stressful and difficult. So some wonderful work was produced from the village, and then going round um, is the work of Kador Miliani, the Algerian artist, who's become a friend of mine really. I've known him since 2006, and he's now actually got indefinite leave to remain, thank God, as a stateless person. But he's, you know, his mental health has really suffered. It, detention in prison is so damaging to people. When people are held in prison indefinitely for deportation, um, and it's so damaging. And round here um, is the work of Everall Hall. Now, unfortunately, he's just actually been released, but he couldn't come tonight um, for reasons of transport. He's, um, he's quite disabled, and it turns out he actually couldn't get someone to transport him, which is a real shame. He's of the Windrush generation, so it would be lovely to hear him speak. Um, so that's really a little bit about the paintings. And I just finally wanted to say that there has been a huge media storm um, about the Windrush migrants. Um, before that point in time, really, we didn't hear anything about this hostile environment and how damaging it was to people. And even though the, the, the situation with Windrush migrants absolutely deservingly has got a lot of attention in the media, we're not really hearing about the other people, like the people in prison. Like this person who was a, who is a windrush migrant, but was in the prison system, and there are kind of uh, young, unaccompanied, former unaccompanied asylum seeking children also in prison who are there because you know they've got linked onto drugs, gangs, and being trafficked and that kind of thing. So people, because things go wrong in their life, often end up in the prison system. But we really don't buy this thing about. Um, illegal immigrants. To us, no one is illegal. Everyone deserves our support. And people have faced um, depo deportation without appeal in this country. They face their legal aid being cut for, to campaign to not be separated from their families and the life they've established here. And they can't access legal aid lawyers in the prison system because 
there isn't that service and legal aid has been cut. So the work we do is trying to get them representation and emotional and practical support. Okay, so thanks very much for listening to me. Um, who's Deputy um, Education Officer. Do you want to talk about what yeah. you've been doing? Um, so, from uh, Maidstone Prison, um, we met uh, Kate in my office last year, and she came up with a wacky idea to put on an art exhibition um, in Whitstable. Um, we, we had no art vision there at Maidstone Prison, but it was something we were looking into. Um, with, with the weeks from Kate's meeting, um, we spoke to the prison governors that were quite happy to put on an, uh, an art project group that was going to run one day a week. I contacted our art teacher, Nikki Dennington, um, that works across other sites in, in, in different prisons, that does fantastic work in, in, in every, every jail she goes to. Um, and I explained to her the idea of putting on a, an art project to generate some artwork for this um, art gallery and also for Kershner Awards that come out of prisons. With that, we, was, we managed to be able, able to get uh, Nikki in and get the art up and running by the 5th of February. That was when we first started our first cohort of eight people. Um, and it's just gone strength to strength since then. We're on our second cohort now. Um, we deal with very, very um, um, foreign nationals that are um, sometimes not not very well in, in prison. Um, some of them have um, massive mental health issues and uh, learning difficulties. So what we what we've aimed to do is we've linked up with our the healthcare partnership in prisons which is Oxley's, and also the um, Drug Rehabilitation Trust, which is forward. And so we therefore put on our art project just for them, to help them through their prison sentence. And as I say, it's going straight to strength to strength. But thanks again for, to Kate for letting us be a part of it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, part of my English, I'm a foreign national. I'm from Pakistan. I get a chance last year in July to meet Miss Adams in Pantamal prison. I was as a foreign national prisoner there. At that stage, I had no clue what would happen to me next. I was no, I had no idea what would happen, what charges would they put on me. But fortunately, I come across to meet Miss Adams. She gave me appreciation. This is the first time that I disclose my personal matters to her. I find her very friendly. At that stage, I came to realize that being foreign national, I am a human being. I'm not just only a foreign national, which is which has no regard as human. I was never been treated as human when I went to the prison. I come out of the prison like in September because the charges were on me, they got busted. I come out. After one month they put me in detention. I get back to her again. I phoned her and she was there for me. And I was the one among all these detainees who find myself that I have got something. I have got some support on me. There is someone behind me. This is Kentra Future Health. Now, I am a, as an asylum seeker. My final interview was conducted last month, and uh, now I'm waiting for the outcome of this. But again, I'm in touch with uh, Kentra Fiji Health and Miss Kate Adams, and they are helping me. Every time I speak to her and she asks me about my thing, like, what about the legal aid? I'm not getting no legal representative. They, they are not coming back to me. I try to contact them all the time. I ask her to contact them. Whenever I am homeless at the moment, I know no accommodation, no money to feed myself. But whenever I get to her, I get 
some advice all the time. She refer me to other charities where I gonna get the support, and it feel like being human. Thank you so much.